Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good afternoon to all viewers. It is a great pleasure to welcome all viewers to our last series of research and innovation webinar, School of Electrical Engineering. My name is Sherry and I am the moderator for this last session. This program is brought to you live from School of Electrical Engineering, Faculty of Engineering, University Technology Malaysia's Facebook. Without further ado, I would like to invite Professor Dr. Muhammad Kamal Ibrahim, the Associate Chair of Research and Academic Staff, to give a short opening, as well as introduce our guest speaker, Associate Professor Dr. Sheikh Nasir Sheikh Hussein, the head of VLSI and Embedded Computing Architectures Design and Research Lab Research Group. Over to you, Prof. Okay, thank you very much, Pan Sharifa Huzaima, for introducing this event. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And salam sejahtera to all viewers. Thank you once again to all viewers that follow this webinar through our FB Live and YouTube channel School of Electrical Engineering. My name is Professor Muhammad Kamal Abdul Rahim. I'm the Associate Chair of Research and Academic Staff School of Electrical Engineering, University of Technology Malaysia. Our topics today entitled Embedded and Reconfigurable Computing that will be given by our Head of Research Group VLSI and Embedded Computer Architecture Design or the short form as a VCAP. Pro Associate Professor Dr. Shana mm. Seshosin. Before he gave his presentation, I would like to introduce about our speaker today. Dr. Shana Seshosin is an Associate Professor at School of Electrical Engineering, Faculty of Engineering, University of Technology Malaysia. He is presently head of BCAT Research Group. Dr. Shana Se obtained his Bachelor of Engineering Electrical degree from Lakehead University, Canada in 1985, MSc Microelectronics in 1987 from Durham University, UK, and PhD Electrical Engineering from University of Technology Malaysia in 2008. His research interests are interconnect routing optimizations and embedded systems. Without further ado, I would like to invite Dr. Shen Asesia Hussein for his talk. Before that, please like, share, and comment in our Facebook School of Electrical Engineering University Technology Malaysia. Over to you, Dr. Sheikh Nasir. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Uh, Kamal. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and good afternoon to everybody. Um, as uh, introduced uh, by Prof. Kamal, my name is Dr. Nasir Sheikh Hussein. I will be uh, talking about the uh, title Embedded and Reconfigurable Computing. This is uh, one of the area of research for our uh, RG, VCAD RG, uh, called VCAD RG. I got a lot of uh, help from my colleague, uh, uh, Dr. Muhammad Nazi Marasono. Um, uh, what I will uh, talk about today is first a uh, very brief introduction about the state of the art uh, computing, and then I will uh, talk about computing uh, basics, uh, and then I will go to the main topic of uh, what I'm going to talk about today, which is domain specific computing. And then I will talk about what uh, we are doing uh, in VCAD uh, research uh, group. And then I conclude with uh, some challenges uh, faced by this uh, reconfigurable, reconfigurable computing. What are the hot topics in tech these days? AI and analytics, uh, of course. So the AI intelligence are everywhere, computing technology, uh, deep learning, use massive AI, of course, deep learning, 
And these activities are supported by tech and consumers, uh, companies. We live in era of IR4, where manufacturing is transformed through adoption of new technologies. So a lot of new technologies, um, too small for me to, I need to, okay, for example, uh, 3D printing, uh, cloud technology, um, virtual and augmented uh, reality tools. So these are the new technologies uh, industry are using, yeah, IR 4.0. IR 1.0 was about steam engine, 1700. Uh, Gartner top, uh, sorry, consulting firm uh, Gartner released uh, their predictions for tech trends that affect people and places where people live and work. They list, they choose these ten. Uh, if you uh, if you search other consulting companies, they choose different uh, trends, but more or less uh, uh, the same. Maybe the the, the branding, uh, the category is slightly different. So I just uh, show some highlights. Um, by twenty, oh, too small. By twenty twenty two, application integrations delivered with robotic process automation will grow by forty percent year on year. So highly automated uh, in the manufacturing industry now. Uh, by another example, by 2023, there could be more than 20 times as many smart devices at the edge of the network as in conventional IT roles um, for in category empowered edge. So I will not um, uh, go into detail uh, the other eight categories. But conclusion is, uh, it will affect, uh, affect us and also our workplace and our uh, uh, living space. I would like to introduce some basics uh, of computing now. We can uh, view computing to be performed by a single processor in so-called stored program model where executions are scheduled in time, thus temporal computing. So that's one way of viewing computation. The other one is uh, I categorize as spatial computing, where many processes are utilized in parallel to expedite computation uh, process. For this a combination, spatial temporal uh, system. Um, we need to balance uh, the algorithm uh, versus architecture. For example, we need to decide um, how, well, which um, functions to be done in serial, which function can be parallelized. We need to probably invent new micro architecture, uh, micro architecture to facilitate this uh, implementation, which require technology uh, advance. Um, we can measure processor performance by examining its execution time, which is given by number of uh, instruction multiplied by clock cycles per instruction, multiplied by clock period. So from those three uh, parameters, we can see that performance depends on a uh, number of instructions, number of clock, um, clock cycle per instruction, which uh, characteristic of uh, algorithm. Uh, the more complex algorithm, of course, require a, a lot more instruction uh, counts. Uh, besides the complexity of algorithm, programming, programming language, language that we choose to implement the design also affects uh, those parameters. The compiler also affects the, those uh, parameters. And of course, the instruction set of the processor itself uh, affects uh, the computation uh, time. 
Uh, unfortunately, uh, processor performance is stagnating. Uh, one of the reasons is uh, the slowdown of most law. And the other one is, uh, which is more current, the other one is then power scaling, which ended about probably 10 years ago. Um, what what is say uh, this uh, then uh, scaling uh, rule says uh, uh, thermal uh, the, the current technology cannot tolerate the thermal uh, requirement uh, anymore. Uh, the processors uh, will to will dissipate too much uh, power. So the the consequence is even if you have many uh, cores, but if they are too hot, they cannot be utilized. This is called dark silicon. You have the, the, the processor, but you cannot use it because they are too hot, you have to turn it off. So some limitations in micro architecture uh, techniques, uh, limited instruction level parallelism per basic block. Uh, as I mentioned before, we can speed up computation by having massive parallelism, but there is a limit to the number of parallelism that you can uh, you can have. Uh, Multi-core is limited by application parallelism uh, of task, and the other technique uh, using cache to improve uh, performance. Also, nowadays, uh, give, only give incremental improvement. Uh, we can see in this graph that processor performance increment is slowing uh, down. So you can see that in 1980s, about 52% per year uh, speed of uh, computing power. But for the, scene, uh, for the last uh, years, uh, only 3.5% per year improvement. So not much. Uh, uh, performance improvement anymore lately. Uh, uh, the speed up of a multiprocessor system, according to Amdahl equation, can be improved by simply increasing number of processors n, as seen in the graph. Um, so we can um, improve by increasing number of processors, but not too many. If, we, if you have too massive parallelism, uh, the performance tapered down. Uh, homogeneous multi-core architecture have uh, limitations. Um, so it seems misleading that by parallelizing identical processing unit or by increasing number of cores, we may improve the uh, the computation speed, but task complexity are not identical. Uh, therefore, to parallelize them is not uh, straightforward. We may also think that use of modern scripting and advanced compilers will improve the ease of programming. Maybe so, but not improving the execution speed, not necessarily so. Um, computing applications are increasingly intelligent and massively connected. These applications require both speedy computation and massive data transfer, thus communication overhead. Um, so, as I mentioned, parallelizing processes not necessarily solve our problem. So, what do we have to do? So we have to be more specific, meaning domain-specific computing. You cannot have a general purpose, wide-ranging applications. You better design a, uh, applications that do a very good job at specific uh, uh, problem solving. Um, so we need to optimize computing architecture to, to do uh, the job function very well. Um, 
So domain specific acceleration, what, what, what are required in order to do this, uh, to invent these domain specific architectures, uh, which I shortened to DSA. DSC is domain specific computing, required domain specific architectures. What do we need to do? So we need domain specific acceleration, effective use of memory, elimination of unnecessary accuracy. Uh, probably we don't need to be super precise. Um, so domain specific uh, architecture, it is easier for us to balance trade off between uh, flexibility, performance, power, energy, thermal efficiency. Uh, Amdahl's law uh, turns out to be rather pessimistic. Actually, increase in problem size gives rise to more opportunities for parallelism, hence more speed up with more processors or cores. Um, somebody else more optimistic, uh, Gustafsson uh, Barsis, uh, Gustafsson from IBM. So, he gave a new formula which is which indicate yes indeed we can speed up with with, uh, with more uh, with larger number of uh, processes um the reason okay because parallelism increases in application when the problem size becomes uh, bigger so for, I mean, the more complex a problem, there is more opportunity to parallelize uh, uh, most of uh, some, uh, some of the operations. Thus, with opportunity for more parallelism, we can use more number of processes to speed up the, our computation. Uh, rather than trying to parallel as much operations as possible to obtain performance energy efficiency, DSC uh, should focus more on domain-specific customizations. Um, well, it is domain-specific uh, computing. Um, um, so, in order to do that, um, in order to do uh, to, to 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 implement domain specific uh, computing, uh, we need to uh, come up with customizable or reconfigurable compute elements, the processing units. We need customizable or reconfigurable high throughput, low latency interconnect fabrics. Uh, because chances are, I mean, parallel uh, processes, they need to communicate to each other. So we need to have super fast communication links. Uh, high abstraction domain specific language so that it is not too complicated for us to design. So we need to rely on uh, sophisticated EDA tools. Uh, we need runtime management, uh, for example, to manage thermal, uh, to allocate tasks among the uh, many processes running in parallel. And we need possibly to have capability of reusable computing platform so that we can uh, reconfigure uh, our processes. This is actually quite important in edge computing. Uh, in edge computing, you don't, uh, you want to be the computing power uh, to have to, to be as flexible as possible. So it would be wonderful to have co uh, edge uh, processors uh, that can be configured. Uh, ASIC implementation for DSA uh, is not viable due to most law economics. Um, therefore, Rather than uh, implementing uh, computation uh, using ASIC, so more viable option is to use reconfigurable logic. So there are several uh, categories of reconfigurable logic. 
the basic one is standalone FPGA, uh, field programmable gate array, or gate array tightly coupled with CPU, or more advanced monolithic. That means everything is one IC, the FPGA fabric and the processor, the CPU, together in a single die. Um, what are the what are characteristics of uh, FPGA? Um, so each device consists of many lookup tables. It uh, comes with arithmetic unit, DSP blocks. Uh, nowadays, uh, massive uh, RAM blocks, static RAM blocks. Um, so FPGA can offer ASIC functionality without non-recurring engineering cost which is prevalent in ASIC. So that's why it is cheaper. So FPGA, we can uh, facilitate, uh, with FPGA, uh, we can have massive parallelism. Uh, we may have high bandwidth and low latency. And probably the most important thing is uh, reduced system cost and also uh, much less design uh, time. It is much easier to design uh, to produce system using FPGA rather than ASIC. This chart yeah, summarizes uh, why FPGA is more suitable for uh, DSA implementation rather than using ASIC. As a uh, summary why FPGA should be used for domain-specific computing. Uh, the potential of reconfigurable logic is not lost on major IC players. They embrace and support this technology. So Intel, uh, I think several years ago, so bought Altera. Altera is one of the uh, biggest uh, FPGA company. The other one is Xilinx. So Intel see the future uh, of reconfigurable computing. So they see the win, they bought uh, the company. And somebody mentioned, uh, uh, said, uh, I'm, I'm not sure, um, the rumors is the biggest FPGA company, which is Xilinx, is uh, AMD, Advanced Micro Devices, is trying to buy Xilinx. So you can see that. Uh, reconfigurable computing is uh, uh, is the coming technology everybody wants to be involved uh, in. One of the things that help this reconfigurable computing is the availability of uh, standards uh, proposed by industry consortia, for example, CCIX, uh, HSA Foundation, OpenCL, all fully uh, supported by industry. Uh, some examples of DSC deployment using FPGA hardware acceleration. Um, uh, Amazon um, Web Services. So they use combination of GPU and FPGA on their cloud computing uh, facility. Similarly for Microsoft uh, uh, for Microsoft, uh, when you search Bing, for example, your search is uh, most probably uh, uh, what I call it, uh, uh, evaluated uh, by FPGAs running on Amazon uh, on Microsoft uh, Cloud, uh, CERN, and also uh, other. Uh, project, uh, in this case, uh, Noctua at Paderborn University. This is very uh, small example, there are numerous uh, examples uh, of uh, using a combination of CPU and FPGA, uh, reconfigurable computing. Uh, some system requirements in order to exploit parallelism in applications for a specific domain are uh, uh, Include processes for reprogrammability and maximum device uh, reuse. We cannot have purely accelerators without some uh, processors. 
So the best thing is to have both processor and accelerators uh, working together. Uh, we need to uh, use memory bandwidth uh, effectively. Uh, for example, we may need to use user controlled memory access rather than simply use cache. Uh, flexible and fast on chip interconnect, as I mentioned uh, previously, and uh, sufficient to use uh, sufficient to to use um, low precision uh, computations. No need to use uh, IEEE floating, uh, for example. Uh, designing reconfigurable DSA requires complex considerations. Um, so, uh, because as I mentioned, uh, uh, we can, uh, we need to decide which part of the application to be implemented using reconfigurable, which one remains on the processor. So we need to um, make a proper choice, uh, hardware, software, uh, which part hardware implemented in hardware, which part in software, and the proper uh, processor to be used. Um, so, a uh, huge uh, complex exploration uh, of uh, design uh, space. So, how do we handle this? Uh, we need increased abstraction, domain specific uh, language that can be easily translated to hardware, and a, probably a super compiler. Um, designing complex hardware is not easy to put it mildly and especially daunting to non-hardware programmers. So how do we overcome this? Uh, fortunately, high level synthesis is available and accessible to software engineers. With HLS, we can uh, reduce, facilitate reduced design and effort because of this HLS usually at a higher abstraction level, design for verification, design space exploration, facility for targeting new platforms. Indeed, the state of the art, the HLS is uh, quite uh, capable. Um, some of the tools available for DSA design, uh, OpenCL, uh, Vivado, this is very popular tools. Okay, VCAT, our, our group used uh, Vivado quite extensively. Uh, so some people use uh, MathWorks uh, HDL coder, which is uh, very useful. You can describe or filter or whatever using uh, MATLAB. MATLAB using HDL coder can transform your design into reconfigurable logic, I mean hardware easily. Although uh, high-level synthesis are becoming more capable and advanced, there is performance gap with design created direct from RTL coding. So of course, this HLF, no matter how sophisticated they are, you cannot beat a um, seasoned uh, hardware uh, designer who design DSC, the, the domain-specific architecture from scratch, from, uh, from uh, from uh, use uh, at RTL level rather than HLS. But um, as I mentioned, HLS uh, is reliable enough to be trusted. But if you super performance, uh, higher experience uh, uh, engineer to produce a better design of at RTL level. Uh, most DSA designs are heterogeneous, that is combination of accelerators and central processor, powerful, customizable, and free CPU are crucial, which is available now with introduction of RISC-V processor. This is heaven sent, if I, maybe I exaggerate a little bit, um, but because free, not only free low quality, this is, um, what do you call it? Commercial level, supported by 200 plus members. Um, so RISC-V 
customizable, free, tremendous contribution to reconfigurable computing. Um, DSA design requires interrelated body of knowledge. So you need to learn a lot of stuff. You need to know uh, in application domain, algorithms, language of design, compilers, tools, architectural principle, uh, implementation technology, and each uh, layer uh, is not uh, is not easy. Um, and all this uh, design requires sophisticated tools. But no problem. I mean, tools people can learn. Uh, so all these things maybe require some rethinking in a uh, university curricula. Uh, I'm not going to go to delve into university curricula uh, now, um, but the upshot is uh, this uh, design uh, domain specific uh, computing requires a lot of interrelated uh, knowledge so I think um, I'm done with the theory. We have uh, um, half an hour, maybe 15 more minutes. So let me introduce uh, our research group. Uh, quite long name, okay. Um, it stands for VLSI and Embedded Computing Architecture Design. So. We have uh, actually nine, uh, nine, let me use my, if I can. Ah, it doesn't work. Wait. Mm -hmm. I want to use highlighter. Ah, it doesn't work. Mm. Okay. Uh, the first nine people, okay, the first nine people. Uh, the top row and the uh, the third three people from the left and second row. Okay, so these are our uh, members. We have nine members. Uh, the others are our associates. Okay, we do collaborate uh, with uh, the other with the uh, these other people from the other research group. And uh, some uh, some member is from MG. Okay. Uh, so we do collaborate and we welcome we welcome research collaboration uh, from other groups uh, as i mentioned we have we do have experience on implementation of applications so if you have some wonderful applications probably we can discuss on uh, how to implement your algorithm so these are graduates and alumni uh, not all some uh, some uh, because we don't have pictures, so we do not include. Um, but we do have quite a lot of al uh, graduate uh, alumni. So the uh, the second last part is, I would like to take this opportunity to discuss uh, our research uh, activities. Um, so we do. Um, I mean. Uh, our members uh, uh, do works in analog mid signal, uh, VLSI and AC uh, designs, uh, domain specific custom computing, stochastic uh, computing, heterogeneous many core uh, SOCs, reusable computing platform. So I will go into, if time permitted, maybe I have probably. Uh, 10 more minutes um, to go through uh, some of the projects in detail, if you have time. So analog mix signal, I give this example, um, carbon nanotube uh, field effect transistor uh, filter. This is the one of the latest technology, car carbon nanotube, uh, very low power. That's why people use carbon nanotube. Uh, so, uh, this, in this project, um, led by Prof. Abu Khari, uh, the design 
the process was 16 nanometer, uh, 0 0.7 volt power supply. And this all pass filter in this example is tunable between 2 to 40 gigahertz. So this is one example of uh, analog uh, design that we do. Uh, I don't have slide, but uh, other uh, analog design that we have designed and sent for fabrication uh, to Siltera. Siltera is the, uh, the where we manufacture, where, where we can send our VLSI or analog design for fabrication. So we have fabricated a uh, low noise amplifier. Uh, we have uh, the, uh, fabricated uh, filters. We have uh, designed and fabricated uh, active uh, and passive uh, inductors. Um, uh, we also have fabricated uh, mixers. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have time uh, to include uh, the the detailed design um, this is um, for vlsi when you design it is very important to uh, to have proper uh, test so uh, one of our member is working on uh, test pattern generation for high fault coverage built in uh, self-test so there is a uh, algorithm called anti-random, but requires complex computations. So we propose to uh, modify it called diverse uh, anti-random algorithm. So the chart shows indeed uh, it gives uh, the algorithm, the proposed algorithm uh, indeed give uh, better results. Uh, next. Network algorithmic uh, acceleration. Um, so we need uh, to have high throughput, low latency processing. So we have several works on accelerated network algorithmic on FPGA. So what we do is we can do traffic classification. Uh, we can malware and spam detection uh, live with this hardware accelerator, uh, with, with FPGA uh, hardware accelerators. Another example is incremental SVM, support vector machine for embedded analytics. Uh, probably we can do on for edge uh, computing. SVM is uh, algorithm to do classification. So requires a lot of um, uh, computations to uh, to separate uh, uh, classes of objects. So we have we are doing in hardware using FPGA, of course. Uh, obfuscated computer virus detection using uh, machine uh, learning. Uh, plain uh, virus is easy because people can use database to detect. But sophisticated computer virus, they are quite intelligent they change their behavior or appearance or uh, or instruction or whatever to hide from database so much much more difficult so we do uh, research so that we can detect this so-called obfuscated computer virus more efficiently give uh, uh, accurate uh, detection network on chip interconnect as i mentioned as i hinted massive parallelism. So we may have, uh, for example, 64 uh, uh, cores. So how do you interconnect those cores? So uh, we need to have proper interconnect architecture. Um, another uh, one of the uh, research is using wireless uh, communication to, to come uh, for uh, the processing unit to communicate uh, to each other. So we have experiment on efficient uh, wireless for data transmission between multi uh, multi cores. Uh, Forty minutes application and task uh, mapping. I think I'll take five more minutes. Um, application and task uh, mapping. 
So for multi-course, uh, we need to allocate the job for each uh, core efficiently so that everybody are busy. We don't, we don't want to have the situation where you have 64 cores, but only two cores are doing the job. The other 62 are doing nothing. Okay. Ideally, all 64 cores do some, uh, some jobs in parallel so that everybody work together to have uh, fast computation overall. But how do you uh, distribute the task is not easy. So we did um, research on that, on how to do task allocation. Uh, hardware virtual platform for multi-core SOC. So when you have uh, many cores, there are so many design space exploration. So you don't want to uh, have what you think is good enough and then you go deep into hardware and then you check the, the hardware and then it doesn't work and then uh, you do your work again and then um, configure your hardware. So what we want to do is rather than test on the hardware right away, so we have a virtual simulator. Okay, so simulate on the uh, on PC first using, of course, the appropriate tools after give performance, then only then you test on hardware. And hopefully your hardware is as good as what the simulator suggests. So we have a hardware virtual platform. Actor based data flow. So again, there is a, a language called CAL, CAL data flow modeling. This is high level uh, abstraction so that we can design hardware much more, much, much more easily. CAL is based on signal flow graph. So you need minimum hardware knowledge. You just describe your operation using a graph and then the CAL tool, C-A-L tool, will uh, uh, will translate your description into uh, hardware implementation we have successfully designed jpeg encoder using this uh, method hardware transactional uh, memory so as i mentioned uh, many cores so they usually uh, almost all share uh, memory so how do you design such that there is no contention when a processor wants to access memory they get a valid data so memory management is very complex so we do uh, investigate uh, this uh, and have some algorithm uh, to ensure the memory are coherent uh, are valid so that uh, many processors when they access the memory they get the data that they want Runtime dynamic thermal management, as I mentioned, um, when processor doing the constant work, it becomes too hot. So for multi-processor, how do you manage so that um, you distribute the task so that uh, none of uh, the processors becomes too hot? Okay. So before it becomes hot, if, if you can do that, uh, uh, ask, uh, control the processor so that um, stop doing it so that it comes cool, cool down and then let the other cooler processors take over the job. Thermal management. Um, fast uh, prototyping on FPGA. Um, we one of the thing is uh, we designed a router okay we designed a router because multi for multi core soc a router is very important uh, so this router uh, we upload into open course uh, so it is available for everybody to use network processing reconfigurable middle box um, so for edge computing, as I mentioned, it is very useful if the device on the edge of the cloud, which is rather independent, can be re reconfigured, can be, for example, doing instead of one specific job, 
you can reconfigure maybe it can do four different jobs okay so it would be wonderful um, but how to do that okay with uh, uh, without exposing uh, threats uh, adapting to this protocol a new application it is challenging um, so the last part of my talk okay is the challenges and opportunities so we have applications so uh, we have to decide which one we want to do to have uh, to put the function in hardware so on the hardware side once we identify the functionality to be done in hardware uh, how do we do that okay and then how do we design the the functionality in hardware and if it requires several hardware how do we connect them okay so when we successfully connect them how do um, how to program uh, the hardware uh, and make sure it works with the processor and when everything works how to measure uh, success uh, it works but become too slow so useless hopefully uh, it become much much faster integrated together processor hardware accelerators work together wonderfully uh, give us to a very fast computation so uh, challenges and opportunities um, as i mentioned uh, technology advance uh, in commodity hardware open source tools open architectures a lot of people do give uh, their work Make, uh, made available their works. So uh, FPGA become one of the main platform uh, bridging hardware software gaps uh, is uh, made um, is facilitated by this uh, powerful high level synthesis software and N risk five opens up greater opportunities uh, because it is powerful processor and it is free. So now everyone can innovate and contribute. So thank you very much for uh, listening to me. Um, I would like to take this opportunity. If you have some idea, we can we can talk. Um, uh, we can talk together. Please contact uh, me or uh, Nazir, Dr. Nazir, or better still, come to VCAT Lab P04 Ground Floor. Thank you very much. So over to you to Prof Kamal. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Shih Nasir. Okay, once again, I would like to thank to Dr. Shih Nasir for sharing the information about the research area under VSI and embedded computer architecture design research group. Now, I would like to open for any Q&A sessions related to the topics that we discussed just now. You can post your questions at our Facebook Live School of Electrical Engineering. Okay, so while we are waiting for the question, maybe uh, Dr. Shana said, can you elaborate more on Gartner technological trends towards 2020? Okay. Um, uh, I think you are referring... I'm oh, sorry. Um, page three. Uh, next page. Yeah. Um, I'm, I elaborate on hyper automation and empowered age. So there are other, uh, you know, uh, technology trends. Uh, probably uh, I can uh, choose, for example, uh, democratization. What it means is, as I mentioned, people do give um, their ideas. Like for example, we, we have a router, so we upload our design to open course. So everybody who wants to have to design a router rather than start from scratch, they can go download our router and if they want to modify, modify it. So uh, another example is uh, application. So it looks very daunting to, to do uh, application, but there is a code block Tang, uh, tang, I forgot, tanker. I mean, uh, people do coding just by just like Lego. I mean, they, they, they drag and drop uh, the code. Uh, Arduino Uno is very easy. So 
I mean, the 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 the, the design is not as daunting as possible because uh, many people company make uh, the tools uh, which is easy to use available for free. Um, so uh, human augmentation. So we have uh, called exoskeleton. Exoskeleton where you can have uh, some robot on, on your arm. So with the assistance of this uh, robot, uh, with this exoskeleton, you can lift. You can lift maybe 100 kilo easily. And uh, other example is uh, people. Um, there is people br uh, have brain uh, implant direct into their brain so that they can control. I mean, for paraplegic, for example, uh, with the brain implantation, they can control movement uh, using their thought rather than uh, rather than hand or something like that. Um, so uh, that's the practical blockchain. It is rather con um, rather uh, what I call it controversial blockchain. But Gartner give an example for Musk and IBM shipping company. According to Gartner, Musk uh, the shipping co container shipping everybody use blockchain. So when they transport con um, uh, the container, uh, they can track where the container is from, who sent it, who received it using blockchain. So this is uh, according to Gartner, blockchain is going to be adopted more widely. So I'm not, uh, we don't have time uh, for other things. Okay, so there are the other examples of uh, the trend predicted by Gartner. Okay, thank you. Uh, just one last question. For people who want to learn how to design and apply embedded system design, do you provide any relevant courses? Yes, uh, that's what I mentioned. Um, if you have uh, some inquiry, please talk uh, to us, uh, email us, or better still, visit us at VCAT Lab. Uh, besides that, we do have uh, we do offer uh, courses. Uh, we have conducted courses for telecom. Uh, we have conducted uh, courses. I mean, when I, uh, courses is uh, how to design using reconfigurable uh, computing, basically FPGA. So, uh, in order to do that, uh, the most important thing is you need uh, you need to learn. Uh, uh, hardware description language, which is the most popular, is a uh, very log uh, language. So we do have a summer school, okay, three weeks uh, program uh, teaching uh, very log and how to use FPGA to implement hardware design. Um, we uh, also contacted by um, uh, ILP. Institute, I forgot, in Sungai Petani, oh, also the IKM, Institute Kemahiran Mara, some, something like that, okay? Uh, so we do provide and we do have all the tools. We do have a lot of FPGA, we have Quarters, we have Vivado, uh, we have Synopsis, we have Cadence, uh, although this is not necessarily about reconfigurable computing, but we do have all the tools. Of course, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, UTM has license for MATLAB, so we can also teach you how to convert your design from MATLAB HDL using HDL coder direct to uh, FPGA implementation. So uh, we do have experience on on conducting uh, courses. Okay, thank you. With that question, that the end of our webinar. Now I would like to pass over to Point Sherry for the closing remarks. Over to you, Point Sherry.
Thank you, Prof. Kamal. And thank you also to our guest speaker, Associate Professor Dr. Sheikh Nasir Sheikh Hussein, for sharing a very interesting topic just now. Thank you, Doctor. All right, viewers, we are at the, at the end of our session today. Thank you all for taking out time to watch our 18 series of live telecast. And for those who missed the live session, can always watch the video again in our Facebook. And please, don't forget to like, comment, and share our Facebook and videos to your friends and colleagues. Since this is the last session of our live webinar, I will end this show with a thought of the day to ponder off. There is a magnificent, beautiful, wonderful painting in front of you. It is intricate, detailed, a painstaking labor of devotion and love. The colors, Alike no other, they swim and leap, they trickle and embellish, and yet you choose to fixate your eyes on the small fly which has landed on it. Why do you do such a thing? All right, viewers, may God bless everyone. Stay safe, keep your distance. And wabilahi taufiq walidaya. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you.